my clock says nine now. You guys want to go ahead and get started and just keep letting people in as they come, or you want to wait a couple minutes? You're the boss. All right, let's <laughs> go ahead and get started in. then. All right, so welcome everybody to our 2021 season meeting. Um, I'm Heidi Mella, the club chair. For those of you who I haven't met yet, um, hopefully I can meet you on the field this season. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that we're all hopeful and looking forward to this season getting off this year. Um, we all need to remember to be flexible and go with the flow for changes if any occur this season. And I'm sure we all are because we're just excited to get back out there. Um, we do, yesterday I sent out an email to the membership um, with a survey for some elections that are up this year for chair, vice chair and treasurer. Um, if you, any of you did not receive that email, <coughs> excuse me, um, you can either let us know in the chat or you can email me and let me know that you did not receive it and we'll get that out to you so that we can get all the voting done. Um, we have some, some business to take care of first and then Greg, John, Chris will be handling the meat of the meeting. Uh, I don't know if Lisa is here, but Lisa, if you have the treasury report, if not, I believe it was given to Steve. All right. Ready for me? Yep. Okay. So I talked with Lisa and she's the treasurer. She said she was going to be busy. So she handed it off. Uh, she told me that the our account is seven thousand two hundred and six dollars. Um, that didn't change over the last year, partly because we weren't requiring dues, so it didn't go up, and we didn't have any expenditures, so it didn't go down. Um, the board did talk board with um, the with other advisors. <laughs> um, talked about. Um, uh, donating some money to U.S. Lacrosse um, in lieu of that, um, uh, we didn't have to spend money to travel to the LaxCon or, or for registration for hotels and such. So the board uh, thought maybe we could donate some money to USL. Um, uh, the bylaws don't let us to just do that, so we're going to put it to a vote. Uh, I'll send out another survey monkey on that and. Uh, I'll just address that, see if you're uh, okay with that. Um, uh, and then um, some text in there and then you can give your responses back. Um, the survey monkeys are pretty simple because one is I just learned how to do them. <laughs> and the other one is if you go, if you add any fancy stuff to it, it costs you $25 a month. So um, I didn't think it had to get too fancy. Uh, also, um, we talked about reimbursing um, anybody that registered for LaxCon. Um, so if you did register for LaxCon, um, please let me know and um, just send an email to me. Um, and then I can chat with you and we can, we can go from there. Okay. Great. Thanks, Steve. Jeremy? You're up. All right. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. I am the, uh, the uh, I guess, secretary of the uh, club group. So just wanted to go over a couple things real quick. Um, I will, <clears throat> I'll get an email out. So if you get an email from me, it means I'm missing some sort of information from, from any one of you all. Um, I've got the majority of the USL membership numbers and the expiration dates, but I just want to give everybody a heads up. If you get an email from me, it's because I don't have that information, so please send that to me. I'm collecting all this data and keeping it in one spreadsheet, um, <clears throat> so just to try to keep good records and keep everybody as current as we can. Um, if you all have any email address changes, phone number changes, uh, whether you were working in Lexington last year and working in Louisville this year or vice versa, please send that information to me via email so I can get that updated and corrected. Um, when you all take your tests, 
whether it's high school or the youth league, uh, send me the test results for that as well. Uh, I'm, I'm collecting that. As we all know, uh, we need everybody to take the test in order to officiate as well as have a USL current membership. So uh, that information will be funneled to Chris and John respectively. So that- Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, yeah. I'm sorry. You said take the high school and youth test. The, <clears throat> they're they're no longer separate tests. Okay. Um, and club is requiring, club leadership is requiring membership to take the combined uh, high school and youth test. Okay. It's, it's a 50, all of them are 50 questions. There's a choice and we have to choose <laughs> the combined. Sorry to- That's okay. Rick no, Young. I just didn't want fine. any confusion. That's fine because I've gotten some test results from people that have taken the the high school and the youth, so I wasn't sure. That's why I brought that up. So, clarify, it's just a combined high school youth test, but send me the results of that because as we get closer to the season, I have to send this spreadsheet to Chris and John respectively because if you don't have – if you've not taken your test and your USL membership is not current, then you won't be able to officiate uh, as far as I know – uh, this year on the field. So again, um, USL memberships, get them to me. If I'm asked any uh, personnel information changes, please send that to me and send me your test results when that happens. Um, I think most of you all have my email address, but if you want, I will give it to you now. You can write it down or just wait if you get an email from me, but I will give it out. If you have any questions administratively, feel free to email me at any point in time. Uh, my email address is Jeremy, as it says on the screen, jeremy.schmidt71 at yahoo.com. So. Um, hey, Jeremy, could you spell Schmidt? Sorry, yeah. they may not. Oh, I see it on the screen now. Okay. But I will spell it because some people may not have, some people don't have their video up. It's J-E-R-E-M-Y dot S-C-H-M-I-D as in David, T as in Tom, 71 at yahoo.com. Jeremy, could you put that in the chat box too? Uh, sure, let me, there we go. Put it in the chat box. I will. Um, that's all I've got. Kayvon did it, it's there. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks Jeremy. Steve, did you have anything else you wanted to touch on right now or should we move forward? Uh, I was gonna do mentoring and, and okay. a weekly Great. chat, if it's okay with John or Chris, if I do that. Go ahead, Steve. Um, all right, Go ahead. All right. well, um, we, we didn't discuss this about mentoring, but uh, in the boys side, they do a mentoring program. Um, the benefit of the mentoring program is uh, a multifold, really. Um, uh, and this is combined with a weekly chat that um, Chris said he would be the ultimate um, uh, reference on, uh, but not the only one because uh, it can be overwhelming, possibly. So, um, the mentoring program is such that we haven't really got it going, but it can be one to one or it could be uh, one to three, meaning that um, uh, during the season, we only have this one general meeting. And then after this general meeting, um, in a way, you're all the player, uh, the umpires are left to the games and you kind of spread out over games with a few different people and different approaches and then it can, you know, your, uh, the consistency of rules or understandings of uh, ministering the rules because there's a rule book and then there's the administrating on the field. So uh, then you have uh, tough games and easy games and different levels and then you get feedback from coaches and players and, and then you have your partner. So uh, to kind of stay centered on that, um, uh, we're going to try a weekly forum where you can send in some questions to my email and then I can relay them to Chris so, uh, so I can filter them out. And, uh, or you can just go directly to Chris or to your mentor if we have that, uh, depending on who's interested in mentoring or not. Um, but 
but the, the idea is that, uh, uh, especially for new people, this is interesting. You have new people that are just learning the rules. And uh, as one assigner said, after two years, you figure you got it down and that's when you start making mistakes. And then you have people that have been around a long time and they have to keep changing every year because the rules change every year. So uh, to keep us all together, uh, a weekly forum might be a place where you can send in a question or, or a, a pose uh, a, in a situation on the field that you don't quite um, know what you should have done uh, or just need some help on. And surely there's going to be other people out there that will um, run across some issue like that too. So we just share that. We stay kind of uh, keep the consistency together. And uh, with the ultimate goal of uh, sometimes there's a policy for the season, like a, a phrase. Um, I was thinking of safe. You make the game safe, you make it fair. So the teams have to win the game, but we want to make sure that we're across uh, one game with two officials or across games that we're fairly consistent with being safe and fair. Um, uh, so we're managers of the game, and that's what uh, Chris ultimately would be is the person that is helping us manage games across levels and um, among us. Um, and uh, the good thing about the mentor, and I'll send that out, so we haven't really formulated that, but I'll send it out and see who's interested. But the uh, certainly a mentee can learn from an experienced official, but the mentor, the mentor, in my experience, because you're going to be explaining something, you have to go look it up and make sure that uh, you're following what either the book says or what Chris says. Uh, and that way we uh, actually all get better. Um, and, oh, by the way, the test, um, you'll take the test, you need to take the test, but th what's different this year about the test is that if you answer the first question wrong, uh, not a true and false, but if a multiple a multiple guess question, if you get it wrong, they cite the, the area in the book where you can get the right answer. Now, a year ago, you if you got it wrong, um, you didn't get the cite until the test was over and then you could find that out, which meant you had to dig harder into the book. So this year, you don't have to dig as much, um, but uh, I encourage you to see that as the test may not be that much of a challenge, but you still want to dig, read the book. And I'll stop there and leave that with Chris. All right, um, I'm Chris Niblock. I am the assigner for the Greater Louisville League, which is the Kissel League, Kentucky Scholastic Lacrosse League. Um, and I'll be handling rules questions uh, and everybody should have my email and my cell number. It's all current and up to date on Arbiter. Um, I think I'm, I'm really pretty responsive in getting back to everyone with uh, with questions and 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 do enjoy getting those from everyone. So we're going to use the mentoring program. Um, I will do my best to pair up officials with their mentor throughout the season. We want games to be fulfilling we want you to enjoy them and um you working with a mentor with an experienced official usually helps with that journey um it's going to be a trying season uh, but um, i think we should all be flexible um, and i guess we'll go over later some issues on the assigners and the like but um Questions are all good. So, you know, don't, you know, and if you're worried about, you know, getting out a message, uh, if you're, you're sort of embarrassed about what you think might be a silly question, you want to just send it to me directly. That's, that's not a problem. Um, there really isn't a silly question. They're all good questions and most likely someone else is going to have the same one that you have. So um, send them all in. Uh, we want to be consistent. So just see, you see something wonky on a game. Uh, if you're watching, uh, ESPN has lots of games on on play uh, on ESPN Plus and the like. A lot of college games, and some of the rules are different. Uh, if you if you see something that happened, you're not sure about it. Uh, if you'd like to ask, I'll be happy to pull up the video and we can we can discuss further.
Steve. Uh, I'm done. Uh, I guess okay. Heidi will move us along. Um, okay, great. I think Greg Schuler was up next doing some updates on the league. And Yeah, Heidi, Thanks. thank you. Um, hi, all. Uh, my name is Greg Schuler. I'm the commissioner of the Boys and Girls Commonwealth High School Leagues throughout the state. I know that, you know, as you're talking, we have a couple of assigners, so most of you are aware that we actually have two leagues in the state. One of those is run by the ADs of the Kissel Schools, and the other league is really an independent league, the Commonwealth League. It's uh, basically a school-based uh, club teams. So we actually uh, administrate ourselves. The head coaches are the officers of the league, and they are the ones who vote on the bylaws that we follow. The reason I say that is because um, one of the things I want to talk to you today real quickly about, because I'm sure there's some questions out there, and I, I referee on the boys' side, and I began last year on the girls' side, so I've got the same questions, is what is going to be the protocol this year for masks and for social distancing and for, you know, stick checks and, and all of that. So what we need to do on the Commonwealth side is we put together a document and I'm putting that together these last few days with John and Chris and Mary and because we want it to be something that club and the league feel comfortable with. And once that document is finished, then I'll put it before the coaches for their vote. And then once they vote on those rule modifications and protocols, then we'll get that to Chris and John and they will get it to all of the girls officials couple of things to remember. This would only be for the Commonwealth teams. I am not sure, maybe Chris or Heidi or someone else can address this, whether Kissel is going to come out, <clears throat> excuse me, with their own document about protocols at their schools and games. But this would be for the Commonwealth for sure. So if you're working a Commonwealth game, now when we have games between schools from the Commonwealth and Kissel, the home school will probably be the one that decides the protocol, whether it be the Kissel League or the Commonwealth League. Okay. Now, I'm, no need to go into all those protocols and modifications today. They'll all be in the document. Quite honestly, they're fairly just commonsensical, but there'll be a few things in there that we'll want you to pay attention to because this is the way the league wants things to go. The other thing that I'd like to just comment real quickly, and I'm assuming not having ever been an R on the girl side and not deserving to be any R on the girl side probably for the rest of my life, I'm assuming that the, the referee on the game contacts the school at least a couple of days ahead of time, confirming the game time and the date and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Also be aware that there may be individual schools that have additional protocols that aren't in the document from the league. So just make sure you're asking the head coach of the home team, are there any particular protocols in place at your site that aren't in the document that we, that the league gave out? Because there might be, and just double check that, okay? And then lastly, and, and I'll move along because I know there's a lot to do and everybody's busy. Um, I know this is going to sound a little bit funky and funny, but just be aware that in the Commonwealth League this year, teams will be starting games at different times, depending upon their geography. The league rule is March the 1st. And so as long as school systems allow their teams to begin to play March the 1st, we'll have games starting March the 1st. Bowling Green area, E-Town area, everybody outside of Fayette County really is going to be starting probably right around March the 1st. Fayette County school dis ADs decided that they weren't going to allow games until March the 5th. So there'll be some schools starting March the 5th. So that's why there's a difference. I'm not sure, but I think Kissel is starting March the 5th or 6th, but Maybe, maybe somebody else can, can address that, okay? So <clears throat> I just want to basically let, let you know that we're, we're preparing that document for all the officials and for all the coaches. So we're all working on the same page. 
And, uh, and once we get that finalized, which I hope is early next week and voted on by the coaches, at least by the middle of the week, we can get it out to you all so you can ask questions or feel comfortable and share that with your partners in your games and your crews, et cetera. Okay. Well, let's have anybody has any questions. Uh, Heidi, thanks. I appreciate Great. the time. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Um, next on the agenda, we have USL certification and training review. Um, I don't, John or Chris, which one of you is going to take that one? John, if you'd like, uh, if you can, go ahead. Uh, if yeah, not, I'll, me, I'll um, I, I don't want to annoy people with my cough. I'm going to share share screen here. Well, and I don't have a teenager here to help me walk walk me through it. Um, so, uh, are we getting my, yes. are we getting the PowerPoint there? Okay. Um, <laughs> if I just give out, Chris hasn't looked at my slides here. It's not that we haven't talked about this, and <laughs> but it's, uh, <laughs> he might be winging it more than I am. Um, Heidi, before we do that, could we introduce, that we, there could, could the new new members introduce themselves? I, I've seen maybe three or four. Would that be possible now? I guess I don't know, Heidi. Well, let's push on then, and we'll get introductions in sometime soon. Okay, um, this is this is just a basic outline <coughs> of what we're doing here. Okay. And I keep admitting, oh, Heidi dropped and then had to admit again. Okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> club is tasked with, uh, by U.S. Lacrosse, along with all other uh, local officials association, to train, rate, certify umpires. So that's why we're doing this. All certifications go through uh, the local officials associations. <laughs> U.S. Lacrosse sets up minimum standards. Uh, club and the other associations may add to that, but we can't take away from that. <coughs> Here's the basic, <coughs> sorry, path to certification. Um, let's see, join U.S. Lacrosse. Uh, I'll speak a little bit to getting to the training videos. Uh, <laughs> New umpires orientation has gone. Um, I've <coughs> um, I've recorded all those. <coughs> I'll put uh, I'll put them on YouTube, and I'm recording this, and this will be on YouTube as well. <coughs> um, so this is the umpire clinic. Uh, attend rating day. Chris will be talking to that more specifically, and then take the combined. <laughs> <clears throat> NFHS and USL youth test. <clears throat> Why should you be certified <laughs> so that you're prepared to be on the field, so that you are <laughs> insured? <clears throat> Chris, this may be my last slide. Okay, I'll go ahead. Let me go ahead. Yeah, I go ahead. Um, so we require U.S. lacrosse uh, membership for uh, a number of reasons. <laughs> One of those is uh, for insurance. Uh, it protects you in case of um, some accidents and protects all of us actually. So well, that's one of the things that we have to be um, really cognizant of. And, and there is a benefit to you. You get a magazine, uh, you get a rule book, you, there are some other things, um, but in, in, in club has received funds from US Lacrosse in the past to help us with our, um, with our mission. Um, so those so your, your $55 is well spent. And that is, we can't waive that fee. Uh, club fee has been waived for this year, but the, the fee for, um, uh, for U.S. lacrosse cannot be waived. So, all right, John. Okay, so we went over this with some of the newer officials the other night uh, in our meeting. Uh, there's sort of two paths for officials to get certified. One of those is the level one, and it goes over as the slide states. Uh, there's sort of five main areas, 
and then there's a rules interpretation, a short video. The videos used to be a lot longer. They're a lot shorter now because the changes have become a little bit less tedious and, and a little smaller over the years, just some tweaks and some things. Uh, but if you're a first or second year official, you are going to need to take the level one course. John? And if you are probably a third year official and beyond the level two, three courses, uh, which goes over the three person mechanics uh, and, and the like. So we're going to have to, uh, because of rating, <laughs> and I'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, we are gonna have to go to three person mechanics, which is, which is sort of nice to get a taste of, but we're gonna have to go to it on ratings day because uh, JCPS threw a wrench in our plans uh, yesterday, uh, which I'll go over a little bit more later. But just be aware, uh, even though you are a first or second year official, you might want to pull up the three-person positioning mechanics video prior to ratings day, just so you have a little bit of an idea of where you should be standing and sort of some of the things you're looking for. Um, many of the things are the same as with two-person but just to be sort of familiar with it, the, the PowerPoints or the, the sessions on three-person mechanics are, are pretty quick. So um, if you're a newer official and doing the level one, you'll want to see if you can get in and uh, just take a look real quick at the three-person positioning and mechanics. That's okay. pretty awesome. That's pretty self-explanatory there. Right. So we get, we get uh, information on who's taking the test uh, and things like that. So as John said, the combined test is one of the <coughs> three tests, but the one we want everybody to take is called the combined test. It's the high school and youth rules, 50 questions. Um, and it's, it's a good one. So don't, be so worried about the like the U10 and U8 stuff. Um, we don't have U10 and U8 in the state, but it's part of the rules test and you can go in um, online. The youth rules book is available online. So you can pull that up real quick, but don't, don't be, beat yourself up over the uh, U10 and U8 rules um, if you miss one. Uh, I might want to speak to this. <laughs> if you're wondering where all that stuff is that we just said, the videos, <clears throat> the uh, tests, and I'm not getting any money out of this. I, I don't get paid by traffic. This is my unofficial resource. Uh, <laughs> Sliderlax.com. Sliderlax is one word. <laughs> Go to that. Scroll down, the first posting after the welcome post is online training for 2021 season. Scroll down in that post and you'll see the direct links <coughs> for both levels. And it'll list um, all the videos, <coughs> all the interpretation videos, the tests, it'll show three tests you only do the combined tests. You can take all three of them, but you only do the combined tests. John, would it be possible for you to bring up your screen so you can show everybody very quickly how you get to what track they're supposed yeah. to be? <laughs> the, um, the operative word there is very quickly. Let me see, oh shoot, okay, hang on just a second. I'm 67. I don't do this real quick. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me see. What do I need to do? Oh, no, that I'm sorry. I'm all locked into my... It, I'll get to it just a second here. Here we go. Okay. Uh, maybe while you're, you're getting into that, I can talk about ratings day. Yeah, sure. Um, so JCPS, so to get on the field to do games, to be assigned games for John and I, uh, you need to have a rating. It's unlike most other sports where you sort of do training when you get on the field, but we have to, we have to see you, 
or an official raider and a, or observer has to see you, certified raider observer. And then um, we give you a rating and it could be like a level one uh, if you're a junior. So if you're a high school student, you'll get like a junior official rating. And then if you're 18 or over, um, you can get a level one, two or three rating. And it's based on your proficiency. So you could be a first year official and you could be into the rule book and do a fantastic job and you could get a level two. Likewise, you could be a returning official and only get a level one. Um, this changed from a couple of years ago when you sort of <laughs> like the military had to go through a progression, time in service, time in grade. Uh, but right now we rate you based on your proficiency, which is really nice. So it's a great uh, thing that U.S. Lacrosse did because some people are a little bit more, uh, have a little bit more time to put into it, are a little bit more passionate about it. And, um, and for some people it comes a little easier than others. And so you're not being held back based on your, your experience, um, based on how you do on the field is how we rate you. Um, but what happened was JCPS informed me yesterday that uh, public schools here in Louisville, Jefferson County Public Schools, will not be able to participate in our rating day because they have put March 1st as the first day that I guess spring sport teams can play. And they were not willing to do a, uh, an exemption for us. We will still have rating day, uh, but it will be just amongst the private schools that have gotten to me to say they would like to participate. So for instance, um, the games are at Sacred Heart, so Sacred Heart is participating, Louisville Collegiate, Mercy, those schools. And then uh, Oldham County schools, we have a Lexington school, E-Town and Bowling Green schools coming in. So all of the teams will have one game. Uh, there's going to be 20 <coughs> halves. Uh, they will play each other once and then they will move off the field and a new set of teams will come in. The games are going to be on the turf field uh, based on the snow and the fact that uh, they won't be able to get out there and line the fields and they're probably going to be really wet as of next week. We, we thought it'd be best to just get it set on the turf field. So the games will start at, at 12. They will go, the last game starts at seven. So we'll be finishing under the light. So there are gonna be eight games and there's gonna be three officials on each game. Uh, you'll work in halves. So for instance, if you work at 12 o'clock, you might have your next segment might start at one. It might start at 1.30. Uh, I'm not going to have you waiting around too long, but there will be a break between your halves. And this is a, a time for you to sort of decompress, get questions answered that you had, uh, watch the next half of the next game and sort of reflect on how you did and the uh, critiques that you got, um, good, bad, everything. So um, that's sort of where we are. I have a schedule put together. I will be getting it out this weekend. Again, it, it sort of threw me for loop yesterday when I got the call. Um, but just be aware that 24 fit, we're going to be limited to 24 officials. Uh, and if you're not in that group, nothing untoward uh, means that I'm going to have to, I, either myself or John or one of the other official Raiders observers is going to have to see you early in the season, like your first game get you rated there so we can get you um, get you all official and everything. Uh, it's just, it's unfortunate the way it is right now. So we've, we've got uh, a number of officials we have to go through, but we're limited by space. All right, John. Okay. Um, Sliderlax.com. Scroll down online training for 2020, 2021 season. I'm just going to connect with the uh, level one link. You'll have to be a member, so you've got to log on, even if you're following that link. Scrolling, scrolling, there we go. Okay, <laughs> this gets you to the e-learning section. <laughs> See the kind of the banner of stuff up top side there. Uh, girls lacrosse officials. Click on that. <laughs> 
Now, I don't know why mine does this, but it does. Go to hashtag 2021 LOP learning. I think I read that right. I don't have my glasses on. Officials, women's game officials. Okay, so I went to the level one area, gives the online <laughs> rules course, gives the level one learning courses. These are, if you went to LaxCon, for some reason, <laughs> if you watch these at LaxCon, it's not posting as being completed. I mean, there's a way around that, but call me if you've done it <laughs> and I'll tell you the way around it. Um, so there's your five uh, LaxCon webinars, two annual rules interpretation, and then the rules exam and the Middle one is the one youth and high school. That's the one we're being request or required to take. Everybody okay? There's the late Matt Salee coming on. You know, All right, yes. I got, I got just, just for my question and maybe for everybody else's too. I know there's a level one and then a level two, three. Um, does everybody in the association, so to speak, need to take both? Or if you're not, if you're a level two, three, you only take two, three, or are we being required to do the level one and the two, three? Well, um, I'll just reflect what I know from what club leadership decided. Somebody correct me otherwise. If you are, okay, <clears throat> uh, new and First year and second year officials are required to take the level one learning courses. Anybody beyond that the, <laughs> are required to take a level two and three. Now, you don't have to take both. Okay. I, have, I have a question too. Brian? Yeah, um, I see on your level one course, uh, it says online rules course and then level one learning courses. Do we, um, and then we have the annual rules interpretation. Uh, do we start with that online rules course or do we skip that and go on with the level one uh, learning course and the, an uh, the annual rules interpretation? I was a little confused about that. You may go in any order you wish you need to take all of these. You can go, you, so you will end up having to do all of them. You can go in any order. Did I answer that well? Um, yeah, is there like a pop quiz or anything in the middle of the online thing or is it just- Yeah, big, big, big secret. <laughs> There's no quiz, no nothing. Okay, good. You're on, you're on your own as far as having to watch them. All right, good. And how you watch them. Thanks. Integrity, integrity. Okay, anything else? I wasn't questioning anybody's integrity. I just meant, is that it? Okay, let's see, Chris, if I can get back to the PowerPoint. Oh. You want to do POEs? Uh, I mean, just very briefly. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's a slide to it, I can I can go to it. Um, are you getting it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, the points of emphasis are. I mean, safety is always no, number one, but points of emphasis are always sort of in, in the front of the rule book. Um, and th this again is the rule book we are using, the 2020 rule book. And you can see in the front um, here, they have point, points of emphasis. And, and really we're, we're wanting to, uh, the letter of the law says that restarts are supposed to be taken within a playing distance of where the foul occurred, but we don't want to always unnecessarily 
keep bringing a player back is invariably when a player gets fouled and she's running down the field, she's going to take more than a step or two to stop or to recognize, slow down and recognize that a foul has been occurred. Um, occurred. We don't want to continue to, as she's self-started, blow our whistle and say, no, 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 you, you started too far forward, move back two steps. Um, she's not gaining advantage with the two steps. So we would just want to be consistent with that, um, especially because the player who fouled her is supposed to go four away. Um, so we just want to make sure, four away or four behind, we just want to make sure that we're not continually disadvantaged them because we've blown the whistle for the foul. So in many cases, we're disadvantaging her there because we've maybe stopped a fast break because we've blown the whistle instead of maybe showing advantage <laughs> in the times when we need to do that. Um, but just be aware that, uh, you know, while the rule book does say that the restart is supposed to be within a playing distance of the foul, which is a stick's length, stick and a half length, uh, which is, you know, four feet, uh, you know, if she starts six feet away, we're okay with that. Um, we just want to be consistent. We don't want to unnecessarily be having to move them back two steps or three steps. Um, you know, the, the field's a hundred and... 20 yards long um, in most cases, and you know, two, two steps is not an advantage. Um, we also want to make sure that we're managing the delay a game self-start. So if they um, if players are continually um, not moving away from the player that they fouled and preventing them from self-starting, we want to address that. Uh, you can blow your whistle, talk to the captain first, and then you can start using the card progression, uh, green, then green, yellow, then a yellow. Um, so, you know, just manage it. Uh, you know, you don't want to start the game with a, a, a green car. You want to talk to the player, especially no one's been on the field for two years. So many of them haven't. So we just want to be proactive. Um you know, of course, a foul in the critical scoring area, you're stopping the clock, you're going to be moving a player to where they're supposed to be. So at that point, you're going to be very direct and very accurate as to where the restart occurs, play has been stopped. Um, all right, thanks, John. Okay, again, repeated fouls. Uh, really, one of the main repeated fouls is a horizontal stick. Um, players should not have their stick in a horizontal position and make stick to body contact. Um, it's very simple for them to, to move their hands like this. So if you keep blowing your whistle and, and it's a foul, um, and if you don't blow your whistle and allow them to do it, they will continue to do it throughout the game. So we, we have to sort of teach them that they're doing it incorrectly with our whistle. And if we don't blow the whistle, then it won't get corrected. Um, so some of the games I've observed lately uh, this is a foul that, that occurs quite often and doesn't seem to be called. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're, we're calling it. And again, if you have problems with it, go to a captain and say, look, your, your team is doing this repetitively. Uh, it's a foul. We've blown our whistle for the foul. You need to address it with your teammates because if it continues, we're going to progress and go up to the cards. So again, we have the ability at any time to upgrade fouls. So if you have a major foul, stick to body contact, they've whistled numerous times, and you want to start carding it, you can card it. So that's a good repetitive foul um, that is a fairly common foul. All right, so Arbiter is our avenue through which we assign games. So for me, um, I am going to, when I send out the schedule for the rating day, let everybody know that I will be in the coming days assigning, for instance, the first two weeks of the season. So for in the Louisville area, that's March 6th. And so we'll go through about March 20th. And so I'll, I'll let everybody know. I want to sort of do this in, in segments because things are changing so much. I, I don't want to go out too far and give everybody the opportunity to get their blocks in. So go into Arbiter, go into blocks. If you can't work on specific days, block those days. 
Um, if you work <laughs> near a school and it's convenient for you to get to a particular school, let me know because the only address I see in Arbiter is the address you input, which is typically your home address. Um, and the home address is important so that you get checks. Uh, some of the schools will be doing checks. Some of the schools, most of the schools in the Louisville area will be using Arbiter Pay. So you'll need to be set up on Arbiter Pay, which is nice. Uh, you get your money from the school directly, usually within uh, a day or two. In some schools, you actually get it the same day of the game. And all you do is you go in there, you can get an alert. They've got an app. You can go in there um, and, and for no fee, transfer it to your checking account. And that usually takes a day or two. Um, so it's very convenient. And then you've got a record of who you've been paid by. So that's, that's pretty convenient. John, you got anything on Arbiter? Um, yeah, I've got a, a tutorial. Um, again, if you go to sliderlags.com uh, and then <laughs> scroll down the categories, the first one is Arbiter. And if you click on that category, <coughs> you'll get a PowerPoint tutorial. I don't think it's too dated. <coughs> um, I think it's up to date, but uh, that should get you through Arbiter and Arbiter Pay. That's all. <coughs> um, so, so this is something, so when you go in and everybody should have this, you, there's a little box, radio box that you have to click ready to be assigned. Uh, put in your blocks, keep them up to date. Arbiter makes it really convenient for you to, if you have a recurring issue on say every Wednesday, you've got a late class, go in and block every Wednesday throughout the season. It'll allow you to put in uh, successive blocks on a certain day, or say, for instance, your class finishes at five, which means you wouldn't be able to get to a site until six, block until five o'clock on every particular day. Um, communicate. Uh, I, I think John and I are very flexible, and we want to make sure that um, this is a fulfilling season for everybody. And when we, we ask for you to get your blocks in, please do. But when you've been assigned a game, um, if you don't know if you can accept it or not, please just tell us. Because what happens is as game time, as the game date is approaching, um, it will show up in Arbiter to us as an issue because you haven't accepted the assignment. So make sure you communicate and say, hey, you know, Chris, uh, I might be able to do this game in two weeks. I'm not sure, but I'll know in a week. Well, that helps me a lot. I'll make a note of that. Otherwise, I will take you off the game and put someone else on it because we have to get people in all these slots. So when he says don't sit on an assignment, um, just make sure you go in daily. You know, go, you know, just every morning or every evening, just, just make it a part of your routine. Um, and they've got the app so you can go online and on your phone. But just go in there on a regular basis and just sort of check to see if things have changed. Um, I will not be sending out a lot of emails throughout the season as a whole. So if I do send something out, please read it, act upon it. Um, but yes, just communicate. Uh, you know, we're just asking for you to let us know and, and we'll be happy to work with you. So if you've got an assignment, accept it if you can. If you can't make a decision uh, for maybe a week or so, just send an email. Thanks, hey, John. Chris. Yeah. Yeah. I just have a quick question real quick. If we played at a high school within the Louisville area, is there a way to block them on Arbiter or do we need to let you know about that? Yeah, so that's a good question. So if you play in Louisville, um, you obviously will have a conflict with that team. Um, and you just need to let me know and I'll make sure that you don't get put on that team. Likewise, if you have a relationship and it's, it's a good point to sort of bring up if you have a relationship with a coach. So for instance, maybe Sydney, your ex coach last year moved to a different team and they're not at your school anymore, but you still have a relationship with them. Let me know about that. So you have issues. There's, there's conflicts with individuals. So for instance, an ex coach, um, it may be an ex-teammate of yours is a coach somewhere. 
And so you have a conflict with them. And then you also have conflict with teams. So if you play for XYZ, XYZ uh, high school, you have a conflict with XYZ high school. Uh, you don't have a conflict with the other teams in the area. There's no conflicts with areas. There's conflicts with individuals and there are conflicts with teams, uh, teams or schools. So, but that's a good question. Yeah, it's just, just email it to me and I'll make sure that um, I don't uh, put you on a game with them. But uh, that's a great question, Sydney. Okay, thank you. Yep. This can get kind of complicated. Um, and Greg's still on, so Greg can uh, correct me <laughs> if I'm incorrect. Uh, Commonwealth <laughs> for their high school games has, and and this COVID time is is kind of difficult too because some some schools <laughs> limit the number of games <laughs> they can have per site per day, <laughs> but this is essentially the the uh, fee structure. Commonwealth does <laughs> a running clock except in the last two minutes. Uh, you see the per game fee. There's not a, if you do a John, JV. Yeah. John. Yes. So, so because of what you just said, and just to go back <laughs> over, most, most schools are only allowing two teams right. to play at a given night. So we're trying to have a varsity game followed by <laughs> a JV game of those two schools. Okay. Because, because of that, in, pre well, in previous years, we would have sometimes have to have three games out of sight, varsity games, to get all of our games in. And so we went running clock. But this year, oh, that's yeah, we've decided to go stop time for varsity and running time for JV. Yeah, I don't know how many times you've told me that and it's hadn't sunk in yet, but thanks. That's I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> new this year. Uh, we are trying to develop, we being club, uh, the ability to cover uh, with Kentucky umpires um, game, games in Bowling Green area. We have three teams there. So um, if you, <coughs> I have one umpire who is local to Bowling Green first year, <laughs> I need to get um, experienced umpire and experienced umpire there to work with him on assignments. <clears throat> so if you uh, want <laughs> to go down to Bowling Green, <clears throat> I'm almost done here, sorry. Um, you will need to, uh, I mean, you will get a $50 travel fee. So you'll get the game fees plus 50 bucks. I just, I need people to help us out there as we start expanding because most, um, most all our umpires are located Louisville and Lexington area. I think I that's right. Really, yeah, go ahead. Are all those three high schools in Bowling Green? I, say again. Are the three high schools mentioned um, in the travel fee? Are those all in Bowling Green? Yes. <laughs> so um, now, so it's Bowling Green High School, South Warren High School, and Greenwood <laughs> High School. Now, if you live in Bowling Green, you're not going to get the travel fee. Uh, it's for umpires, experienced umpires that are coming from Lexington and Louisville. John, I just add to make sure everybody's aware, I'm pretty sure they would be, that that's a central time zone. Oh, yeah. So to make sure people know that, that when you're working those games, when you see a 5.30 start, that would be a 6.30 start Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, yeah, got you. John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. On the um, stop clock or on the, the games, the 50-minute running clock for varsity, are they going to stop still on the goals for varsity and not for JV? Because the clock stops after they score a goal. Yeah. Until... 
I was, there's I was a stop clock to... on every whistle in each half the last two minutes, but there's also a stop clock after the goals on varsity and not for JV. Greg, I think that's what. Wow. Yes. Yes, yeah. that would be okay. correct. So we're going to have to, John's going to have to revise this, yeah, this yeah. document on the screen a little bit, but we're going to go. In other words, <laughs> the reason we're able to do this this year is because we only have two games and one of them is a JV game. Yeah. And secondly, because we want our girls, because we've had to have multiple games, they've had running clock. But when we go sanctioned, hopefully next year, it'll be a regular stop clock game for everybody. So we want our girls to start getting used to that. And this gives us the perfect opportunity to do that. So the varsity game will be the regular <laughs> stop clock rules. And the JV game will be a running clock even after goals until the last, you know, minute of every st on each whistle in each half, the last two minutes of each half. We will follow that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And thanks, Greg. I, I yeah, was sure. for some That's reason okay. <laughs> not connecting the dots in my brain. So, okay. Uh, the, uh, what I want to get out there though, <laughs> is the per game fee and the travel fee. Uh, let's see. Next, um, Kissel. This is in no way a complete chart of Kissel because I know there's different combinations and three person, two person. Uh, Chris? Yeah, no, that that appears to be, uh, I have not been told of a change, uh, especially you know this year. Um, so it still seems to be the same. Generally, uh, most officials will be doing uh, JV and varsity uh, double headers. We are looking to start at freshman play day, which there will be probably two, hopefully maybe three games um, back to back to back at one site. And that's a really good opportunity for those officials who are looking to sort of make the bridge between the youth. <coughs> and when we say youth, it's talking about under high school. So eighth grade and below going up to the high school level. So uh, the, those freshman games are really, are really good games to be on. Um, and they're also, they, they pay $50. So sometimes, you know, if you get two of them together, hundred, three, it'd be $150. Uh, but that should be the correct fee structure there. Uh, there are some three person games there. <coughs> two years ago, every out of state team that came in got three person games as well as every game played between say for instance uh, Sacred Heart, KCD and Eastern. So there were probably 30 plus three person games that I had during the regular season, which was really good. Uh, this year, there are very few out of state teams coming in. <coughs> so our need for those three person crews and just our ability <coughs> is limiting us, but there are going to be a number of games that will have three officials on those games. So just be aware that the fee structure changes a little bit for three person. Um, Lexi, Lexington area <laughs> middle schools. Um, there are a couple of 12 v 12 games that <laughs> I don't have on the schedule yet. Um, <laughs> there's gonna be an 8v8 <laughs> outdoor league. Um, and uh, on a smaller field, two officials, and hopefully three three games per night there. And uh, I don't know, Louisville Area Middle School. <coughs> Chris, I don't know, Louisville Area. Uh, as of now, there are no, there's no plan to have middle school games run through Jefferson County Public Schools, there will be a league, and um, I believe Hallie's on the call, so there will be a middle school league at King Louie on Sundays that, um, Hallie, if you're, if you're able to, maybe you could just briefly mention about that. Hey, uh, all. Sorry. Um, I'm multitasking today. Uh, yes, King Louis is going to have a middle school league. We actually have a meeting with the coaches 
tomorrow. I'm not sure on the pricing on that. Um, I know that the pricing that you showed there, Chris, includes a discount for multiple games. I need to double check with Mike how he's doing that. It, it may or may not have that discount, um, but there will be probably four games, maybe more back to back on Sunday afternoons. They start at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I don't think, so there's a discount for high school games, but I don't think we have a discount. That's for all the, I have. Do y'all have any questions about that? Did you hear, hear me, Hallie? Yeah, sorry, what'd you say? Yeah, I don't think that, so we have a discount for back-to-back -back varsity JV games, but I don't think in, in our area we have a discount for middle school games. So Okay, gotcha. You would make, whether it was uh, fifth and sixth or seventh and eighth, you got two game fees for those, two, two straight game fees for those two games. So it would probably still be that. They are all going to be seventh and eighth grade games at King Louis. Great. Thank you. Uh-huh. And this is sort of toward the, the end of our, our discussion. Um, we want people to, you know, there, there are some things you can control when you get out there and, and how you're dressed is, is one of those things. But we understand that uh, everybody can't get perfectly black shoes like you, you want to get comfortable shoes and we would love for them to be predominantly black. um you know nike has logos we understand that there are logos we understand there are logos on on shorts kilts pants and the like um, we wear one inch striped shirts and you'll want to have like a black maybe overcoat that you could wear for really inclement weather so get like a <laughs> A waterproof or, or at least a jacket that can shed rain that you can wear over top if needed. Uh, some of the mandatory things are uh, the cards, which are the same if you do field hockey, same, same color cards, the red, yellow, and green um, as John says. The, and then we, we also have a flag. So you can use yellow. Sometimes they look a little bit orangish. Um, it can be it can be a, a, a you know an old dishcloth. Uh, wh whatever works for you uh, is fine. And then uh, Fox Forty whistle is usually what we recommend. Although these days a lot of people are using electronic whistles. Uh, just beware if you use an electronic whistle to make sure you have backup batteries to make sure when you get to the field that um, you're okay. Um, so for that purpose. Uh, you know, some people use a cover on the whistle now. Uh, that that's fine. Whatever you're you're comfortable with. So we're getting sort of toward the the, the crux of of the season. Uh, John will be starting on March first with the Commonwealth League. Uh, Kissel starts on March sixth. John's got a jamboree. John, do you still need more officials for that on March 5th to 7th? Um, I'm still playing with that. I mean, I can always use more officials. It's better to have more than not enough. Um, okay. I, I've got assignments, but pe some people sitting on them, so which aggravates me to death. All right, um, so this next slide pulls up a good one. So in the pregame, we're going to be changing things up a little bit than the past. Um, we are only going to have one captain, one coach. Uh, everybody can be socially distanced when you get out uh, for the meeting. Not an issue to have them, you know, three yards on one side of the midfield, the other one, or two yards on one side, two yards on the other, and we're, we're, we're far enough back. Um, you will certify and you just want to make sure that they're aware that the goalie chest protection has been changed. Uh, they're given plenty of notice in this and, and you're not going in to physically check whether or not it has the logo on it, but you are asking the coach, like with everything that they are certifying that their players are all properly and legally equipped. 
Um, stick checks. We want to um, probably change a little bit about how we do the stick checks because of COVID. Um, I think we, we can recommend that you, you pick five sticks uh, before the game and just check five random sticks maybe of the starters. You can ask the coach immediately after you certify them to you know have their starters line up and just pull five sticks. So that way you can go and you can sanitize your hands if you'd like after checking the sticks and you'll be done there. Um, coaches always have the ability to call for a stick check during the game and officials on the field, if we think a stick is illegal, uh, we also have that ability to randomly check sticks. Although you just wanna be really careful about checking sticks from both teams, not just from one team if you decide to do that. But um, it's generally not much of an issue, but maybe in the early games, we wanna make sure that there are sticks uh, meet requirements and at rating day we will go over and that'll be a good opportunity for you to practice as well as those teams that participate they'll be getting their sticks checked there so hopefully when games start the next week they will still be legal on um, one of the training videos we are specifically tasked during the captain's coaches meeting to ask the coaches if their goalkeeper has the new chest protection um, why we're specifically asked to ask about that, I don't know, but that's what we're asked to do. <clears throat> and coaches may think it's a new rule. It's in effect this year, starting this year, but it's been in the rule book for a couple of years. Ask about the goal, goalkeeper chest protection. Please. And if you need all the the <laughs> chest protector needs that Noxy label. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was somebody asking something or? Okay. Sorry, John. I my phone went on mute. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. What What about draws? Are we doing? Are there? the officials going to do the draws throughout the game after each goal and so forth, or what's been discussed on draws? Yeah. So that's really a, such a good question, Rick, and it's really up to the leagues. And so I know the Commonwealth coaches have, have talked about it and in Louisville um, they're wanting to the draw, uh, you know, it's just an integral part of the game of, of lacrosse. Um, it's one of the things that makes our game unique. Uh, is, is having that 50-50 ball after every goal. So if you want to wear a mask for the draw, wear a mask for the draw. Um, and that's really the only, there's really not a change there, but we are doing the draw after every goal. Are we allowed to use electric whistles instead of the, yes. the traditional whistle? Yes. Well, all right. Yeah, and if you want to mask the whole game, you are free yeah. to mask the whole game. Um, and we just ask that if you're not masked, uh, I think Jefferson County Public Schools and, and probably the Commonwealth is going to be the same, that when when game is when play is not in effect, so during timeouts, if you get together or if you're talking directly with someone, you're going, going to need to have a mask up. When you enter the facility, When you essentially when you leave your car, you should have a mask on. Um, up until the moment when you blow the whistle to start the game. Um, if you wanna wear it during the game, that's fine, up to you, um, but it's gonna be required up until that point. And as soon as the game is over, you're gonna to need to get a mask back on um, until you get into your vehicles. So just to add what Chris is saying, all of that will be in the document that will come from the league and that Chris and Mary and John have had input into and so you'll be able to have that with you. Now, I do want to add something that we're finding in the college game on the boys' side, at least. And I don't know. I'm going to find out on the girls' side at high school. Some of the colleges are requiring, official, requiring officials to wear masks during live ball play. Not many, but some. So I'm going to find out if there are any schools in the Commonwealth 
that are going to have that additional requirement for their site. I haven't heard of any, but I think I want to get ahead of that so we don't have something at the last minute and somebody's not prepared to be wearing a mask during live ball play. So I'll, I'll get back to that. I'll give that to John and Chris and they can get it out if there are any schools that will be doing that, okay? Hopefully not, but you never know. Thanks, Greg. This is, this is an opportunity to ask any questions about videos watched, anything like that. do have one question. Uh, I know in the past few years that uh, NFHS has been writing the high school rule book. I was wondering if there was any digital uh, access we had to that similar to the youth rule book. If anybody knows anything about that. Yeah, you can go through the Federation website and I believe NFHS.com and you can download the digital version. They also have um, an app for it that you can pull up. I'm looking at mine right here. So I know there are ebook yeah. um, versions. I've got an ebook on my Kindle. Um, but there is nothing put out in a in a PDF format that you can just download, like the youth rules and like the manual. Because everything I've found so far have been for purchase. Yeah, NFHS uh, owns the rule book now. Uh, you're, you're not going to find that free. Perfect. U.S. Cross owns the manual and the uh, uh, youth rules. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, the, so the, the app is pretty convenient because you can do word searches. Um, so that that's a fairly easy one to do. And it's, it's laid out pretty well. I think it's 5 or $6 for the, uh, the rule book. Uh, if you do multiple sports, you can put them all on the same dashboard uh, and pull them up separately. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I have a question. Um, where is Rating Day taking place? It's taking place at Sacred Heart. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that's what SHA is for. Yeah. Thank you. Steve, do you want to wrap up or if we don't have any more questions? Heidi yeah, was trying to, to get up. on, so. Okay. Heidi got bumped. Um, I can go ahead and wrap up. Um, anybody else have anything to add? All right. Well, let me do this. And if somebody has something or uh, can correct my. My wrap up. So what I was listening, uh, one, um, to follow up on some folks, one, Greg Schuler, he mentioned um, notifying the teams or representatives um, that you're the officials or the umpires on the game. And, um, you know, maybe two days, three days ahead of time. This is useful because, uh, first of all, when you respond to them, they know that you know that you're coming so does your partner or partners. And then um, the field, you, you're verifying that it's the correct field, the location, verifying the time. So as you, uh, the games that you're assigned to, one of you, and I think in Arbiter, there's a lead official, but one of you would want to uh, respond to that Arbiter notice, which usually has the coaches or representatives names and um, emails on them. So, uh, this is just one of the several things that make your life easier. Uh, so notifying them and then they can get back to you with any changes or any possible changes. Uh, and then what you're basically saying is if there's any, any, any kind of major change to this, just let us know, let the uh, umpires know. Uh, so you don't make that trip over there. Um, all right, in case it's canceled or changed. Uh, well, to another to one follow up on that, Steve, it, that's very important. The lower the level, it, it gets more and more important to uh, confirm with an AD where you're going to be because they'll change sites 
from year to year <laughs> and um, just confirm where you're going to go, where your game is. Okay. And then um, to, um, to the mention about accepting assignments. So just so you know, the uh, assigners do a puzzle piece uh, to put together these assignments, places, levels of experience, locations, availability, <laughs> it can drive them mad. So uh, if, as soon as you're able to get res uh, to accept or get back to them or just you know call them or email them if you're having some issue with it uh, because they've got to do all, a lot of juggling on these games and, and officials. Um, but another one to follow up, make your day easier is that uh, if you make the managing the game easier, you dress. Chris was lining up the equipment, tools, and dress. Um, if you can walk on the field looking sharp and you, uh, uh, you go to the table, you go through your steps, you look like you know what you're doing and you could be brand new, uh, you make your game much easier uh, because they're going to make some presumption that you're organized. Uh, if you're not looking that way, and these are easy to do, because uh, knowing the rules and the details are the, is the work. Um, you can already put in the mind of a, a coach or a player that you may not know what you're doing. So, um, you know, other than knowing the rules, uh, preparing yourself visually, um, how you approach, how you walk up to them, how you talk to them pregame, um, that's a big help for when you're managing the game. Uh, and then also if you're in shape, um, if you're in shape and you're on the call, uh, it's hard pressed to argue if you're right there. So, um, and calls are easier if you're actually close to the play. Um, there is a deadline to uh, view the LaxCon trainings. That's the 28th, which happens to be the same day as the rating day. Uh, one is it's required, uh, but two, again, the more you know, the more you experience, the more you look at, you know, they were talking about tests. I'd take all three tests. Repetition makes you better. Uh, reading any kind of uh, um, uh, rules, interpretations, and, um, and LaxCon set all that up with that idea. So uh, do that the best you can. Uh, so you're set for rating day, for one, and then for the season. Uh, look for an email as far as for mentoring. Uh, I'll send that out. And also the survey monkey, the one for voting, uh, and then another survey monkey for um, donating money to USL. And I think that's, oh, by the way, I think John said that this whole um, meeting is on YouTube. So if you've missed anything or want to re rehash it, right? John? Well, it, it be, will be. I'm going to it, yeah. it'll be recorded and I'm going to format it for YouTube. And yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll send out links. If you want to take us to court and say we never <laughs> we, we never said that, well, you, it's proof you're going to be able to re, re watch this. All hey, right. I'm done. Thanks. Hey, John, would it be, is there anything top secret in that PowerPoint that we could send out to everybody that's on this call so that if they wanted to use that at any point as a go back as a reference, because you did have the links in there, um, would it, would it, would you be open to sending that out? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm happy, <laughs> happy to. Um, so what, it, what actually are you wanting? You wanting it on the video or are you wanting specific <laughs> What, I tell you what, Jeremy, you and uh, Chris and I are going to need to talk briefly afterward about rating day. So if you could tell me specifically what you're wanting, I'll put whatever needs to be out. Just the, just attach the PowerPoint to everybody that we sent uh, the email to so that if anybody wants to reference back, just the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. I'll, I'll think through. I, I mean, it's nothing secret. I just, I'm... That'd be a pretty big file to send down. Um, okay, let me let me think through that. John, if you save it as a presentation and not as the actual PowerPoint file, when you go in to save your PowerPoint, you can save it as a presentation and it sends out ah, yeah. it's a smaller size. Okay. And you can just attach that. Super. And then they can pull it up in a viewer. A and don't even, if they don't have PowerPoint, most people have PowerPoint, but they're still able yeah. to view it. 
There's one of those teenagers that knows how to. I'm not a teenager, but thank you. (laughs) Okay, good to hear your voice. Just a training. (laughs) I'm just a trainer. (laughs) Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, there's nothing else. Um, I I think Heidi. I don't know if she made it back on, but. uh, that's all for. Um, she got bumped and <laughs> couldn't get back in. Okay. Well, Jeremy, uh, could you wait with for me and Chris? <laughs> yes. Yeah, thanks, thanks everybody for um, attending. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to reach us. Um, good luck with the season.